to Joe and Di's uh, allotment channel. I'm Joe and Di's behind the camera. Um, we're in week one of August now. A um, bit like the previous few months, it's, it's a busy month still, but it's a sort of transition period now. We're now starting to sort of come to the end of some of the crops and we're still sowing um, stuff for the autumn and for the winter, but it's sort of the tomatoes in the greenhouses, they're sort of coming, they're going red now, a lot of them. Um, they're still sort of producing, they're very few now, they won't produce that many more this time of year. Saying that, there's a few flowers at the tip here, so, um, but yeah, I mean, they're starting to go red, so we'll, we'll harvest these today. Um, but yeah, so we've still got lots of harvesting to do. We've still got um, sowing to do, even in August, we've got a lot of sowing to do. Um, we've still got um, planting out to do, the successional crops that we've been planting into modules, so they're like sort of plug plants, we put those out into the plot to the um, allotment soon. So we've got a lot of um, uh, sowing to do this morning um, in modules and pots. Um, so what we do is we plant them in pots and we use them like a plug plant. So the first thing I'm going to do is spring onions. It's a white Lisbon spring onion. It takes about 21 days to germinate and they should be ready in about four months to pull in bunches. So what we do is plant them in pots and just plant the whole pot into the ground and then use that as a sort of bunch of spring onions, pull them, pull them out one at a time basically. Um, so we do those first. So these go about one centimetre deep. And I'll sprinkle them sort of evenly in the pot so we get a sort of nice bunch of onions in one go really. So there's still quite a lot of planting we can do in August. sprinkle them gently so six or seven in each bunch is quite sufficient I think that's it that will do now we'll just cover them gently one centimetre deep put that in there lump of wood can come out firm these down, they've been pre-watered already, so they're nice and moist, as I said, about 21 days to germinate. Give those nice firming down. So these are the ones that planted earlier, so they're sort of uh, germinating now. And we've got another uh, successional planting which is due to go out this week as well, so this is the first follow on, so to speak. So next thing I'm going to sow is some spinach some perpetual spinach beet, um, a spinach called Giant Winter, another spinach called Matador, and some chard. So what I'll do is sow them into pots, and I'll prick them out when they get um, large enough to handle, then they'll go into the, to the plot later on. So they take about 12 to 20 days to germinate, and they should be ready in sort of between eight and 14 weeks. So first I'm going to do is spinach beet, a nice sort of large seed, perpetual spinach. Let's have it put them in the pot and spread them out quite well. Prick them out later when they uh, germinate. So we've still got some growing down the allotment, but it's sort of coming to an end now. There's a bit in the garden as well. That's those done. So the next one we're doing is chard. And they look very similar to the um, perpetual spinach seeds. I'll spread those out as well. These will be pricked out later as well. Try and get a few in each pot. those in. So these are matador spinach, so these are real spinach, unlike chard and um, perpetual spinach which are members of the beet family. I'll spread those out as well. So a 
few more of those, I think. Can always prick them out later. And this spinach variety is called Giant Winter. It's quite a small seed for a giant's winter. Put those in there. That's it, we'll cover all those over in a minute. It's all right, I'll just rub them down. Give these a firming in. So the uh, perpetual spinach and the chard go a little bit deeper or a bit more covered because they're sort of larger seeds than the spinach ones. That's those done. We like to grow a lot of cow. Um, we use it, we, we, we dehydrate it and use it in a lot of our recipes. So I've got three varieties here. We've got a curly scarlet, which I haven't grown before. It looks quite nice. We've got a Black Magic, which is uh, one of our favourite ones, and some Red Russian. So we'll do those next. So I'll do the Curly Scarlet first. And these are very, very hardy plants. I mean, we won't transplant them to this sort of four to six inches high. Um, so they should um, germinate in sort of seven to 12 days. And they'll stay in the ground all over winter. So the cold doesn't worry them too much. Do the red Russian next. So these only get covered to very lightly. They're quite a small seed. favourite varieties. That's that. Down the top. So these should be germinated in seven to twelve days. They've been pre-watered but I will keep them moist because it's still um, pretty hot. So doing some red giant mustard, red leaf variety. That's the end of the packet actually. So yeah, I mean we do these successionally. They're lovely in uh, salads. A little bit left, I'll keep that. So they go about a quarter of an inch deep and uh, they should be ready in sort of six to eight weeks. So doing two varieties of lettuce, a continual successional cropping as well. Um, Little Gem and Lolo Rosso. Little Gem's a sort of a, uh, not a loose leaf variety. This one's a loose leaf variety. This one's a more sort of a compact variety. So if so, these sort of grow quite thinly and prick them out when they're ready to be pricked out. So these are the Lolo Rossos. So we only need a sort of six to eight, really. There's probably too much, too much in there again, but um, you can always give them to family and friends. If you've got too many, they don't go to waste. And some little gem as well. too many as well. <laughs> so these should uh, germinate sort of seven to ten days and they should be ready for pudding in sort of uh, eight to ten weeks. So these coriander so they take about 14 to 21 days to germinate. So they take quite a while. Um, and what we do is, once the greenhouse empties out, we can tr we can put some of these into the greenhouse as well. Once we've once we've taken out all the tomato plants, if these are sort of a, a, about the right size at the right time, we can put some of these into the uh, greenhouse for overwintering. So just give these a firming in. Um, I mean, there are there are things, other things you can sort of still sow in the week one of August. You can still sow um, spring cabbages or Oriental greens as well. You can still be sown this time of year. 
So I'll give them another little sprinkle and they'll stay in the garden now until they've, uh, they're ready either for transplanting or planting out on the plot. Get a little wet. That's it. So we've got our um, next uh, succession of planting to do, plug plants. We've got some lettuces, we've got some uh, radish, spring onions, coriander and parsley. We've got some mustard and some bit, two types of beetroot, boltardi and cilandra. So we've got all those to put into this bed. What we did last night, we watered it thoroughly last night. So it's absorbed a bit of the water. We gave it a thorough watering last night. So hopefully we'll put the plants in and we'll give it another watering now. It's got a good root system and it will take off as soon as we put it into the soil and keep it watered hopefully. Yeah, just make sure we put it in and firm it in nicely and we'll give it another watering now. So these are the low low rossos. Let's see if we get these done. And then we'll do some more. So we've got two little rows of uh, lettuces there. No low rossos and little gems. A little bit of radish at the end there. Now I'm going to put in some um, little clumps of spring onions. This one's got a lettuce growing in it as well, I'll leave it there. <laughs> so we put them in, firm them in, and we'll um, try and leave a little ditch around them so it's easier to water as well. They should pick up quite easily. So that's that section filled up with Lolo Rosso little gem lettuces. We've got some radish there, some spring onions, we've got coriander parsley, uh, mustard, rocket, and two types of beetroot. We've got Voltardi and Cylindra. And what we've done is filled up the end of the bed with some cow that we had uh, left over in pots. They might be a bit close together, but we'll crop them as we've got some uh, leaves on them and what we'll do is we'll cover them over with netting now to stop the pigeons getting to them. So what I'll do first I'll um, harvest the tomatoes in here uh, to start with. There's some nice big ones here. So Got a nice little crop out of the greenhouse there and a couple of peppers as well. So yeah, I mean that's uh you might have to think of a, a way of sort of preserving them soon. So maybe cook them down into sort of bolognese sauce with some garlic and onions. Um so that might be one way of preserving them. Let's have a think about it. Um the basil that we chopped down a couple of weeks ago to dry sort of regenerated, we chopped it off and it started to come back to life again and regrow so we'll get another crop out of that in the next few weeks. So yeah, it's not a bad little crop. We've got some nice peppers for me as well. Some nice big ones there, lovely. Good stuff. These ones are turning colour now. There's another red one there, I'll take that. So the end of July or beginning of August is a good time to harvest onions. We've got some shallots and onions to harvest. We've got some over there, some over here, and shallots here amongst the weeds, if we can find them amongst the weeds. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll we, we dig them all out today, take a moment, I've, I've, I've um, made a sort of drying rack for them in the garden, and we'll take a moment and dry them. Once you've dried them, they can last for quite a while in storage, as long as you dry them thoroughly, let the skins uh, cure and they'll last for ages. So yeah, we'll, we'll get on and do those now. Just loosen them up a bit. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad the shallots, looking quite good. So you can pickle with it, pickle some of these if you want to as well. Oh, there's a nice little diddly one there. Yeah, so it's just a matter of taking them home 
and cure them. So the onions come out of the ground quite well. Just a matter of taking off some of the loose skin. You can leave the uh, stalk on it, that will dry off on its own. And we prefer to grow the red onions rather than the white onions because they're nutritionally um, better for you. And slightly more expensive in the shops as well. Although onions are very, very cheap. They don't taste as good as the ones you grow yourself though. So we've harvested all shallots, they're looking quite some nice sized ones there actually. Not too bad. So they're the shallots, I think they're they were red sunset, I think. We've got the red onions, quite a nice size some of them. Just to take home and dry. And these are the ones we grew from seed, which I'm quite pleased with. Not done bad, quite a nice size some of them. Not bad. So we'll take all these home and dry them. So we just harvested some outdoor tomatoes and outdoor pepper, lovely. And we're starting to um, harvest the plums now as well. They're ready, I think we'll have to harvest quite a few this week because they, they don't last long before the parakeets come along and have a nice meal. So we'll um, harvest a lot this week and maybe dry some as well. So we're harvesting some marrows today as well. Nice size. So yeah, we, we love the strip courgettes, but we also love to um, harvest and store some marrows for the sort of autumn, winter months really. We found if we used to keep them in the shed before, and I think they used to sort of rot away quite quickly as soon as the first sort of frost came along. But if we keep them indoors, give them a good wash and keep them indoors, they last months and months and months. I think they lasted all the way through to sort of February, March last year. So really good. And look back here. Not sure if that one's a cause yet or a marrow, really. <laughs> so it's not a bad little harvest. We've only got six uh, cause yet marrow plants, and we uh, picked a few earlier in the week as well. So we're having a good crop from those this year. So we're harvesting some um, more climbing beans, but we'll um, just harvest the uh, soft ones. Any that are starting to form. So sort of beans inside, we'll leave, like these ones here, we'll leave these to um, produce seeds and we'll harvest those at the end of the uh, period when, the, when it dries up. This one's already starting to dry up already. So we've um, just picked some black berries, very few raspberries, quite a lot of plums though, they're looking good. Um, some beetroot, and some more apple cucumbers so yeah so the other jobs you can do this week are continual weeding obviously uh, continual feeding of tomatoes and other other sort of crops that's still producing um, I should be earthing up the leeks but they're still not big enough to earth up so I'll leave those another week or so I think for the stems to get a bit thicker before I can start earthing those up so yeah it's just a bit of a mixed mixed bag this week so what we're going to do today is a plot tour or plots tour of plots 52, 59 which is up there and the kitchen garden at home. Um, working our way through harvesting the potatoes. So we've finished the rockets and we're now on the Nicola salad which is the second there it is. We're working through those uh, every week. So we've still got the main crop to go. Um, Comfrey's regenerated itself, that's growing quite well so we need to sort of chop that down and uh, make some more comfrey liquid. Um, the squash bed though enjoys the heat and that's done really well. We've had lots of courgettes and marrows. The butternut squashes are growing well. They're doing quite well. We've got quite a few here. The pumpkins are doing well. So the leeks have only just started to grow now really. They should be a lot sort of larger than this by now. Um, I'm normally earthing them up by now but I've not, they've not been large enough to earth up yet to sort of increase the sort of white stem area. But the second lot of um, sweet corns, they're doing well. So is the cow, which is undercover. We can start maybe cropping some of those leaves off that shortly. They're, they're looking okay. I weeded all this area last week. So our French beans, we're leaving to dry on the plants. We're gonna crop those for uh, seeds. Seeds, beans. <laughs> We're going to crop those for beans and dry them off and use them in sort of soups and sort of stews during the winter. So we've got quite a few here to dry off. 
So we've got two apple trees on this bed as well. And they're looking quite good. They should be ready for sort of uh, harvesting in a three to four weeks, hopefully. So we'll start harvesting those and we'll store those um, for winter use. These ones are a good eater, so we'll harvest these as well when the time's right. They're still a bit firm at the moment, so I don't think they're quite ready. Rhubarb's all come to an end now, so we need to sort of tidy this area up. And uh, yeah, maybe put some manure or compost over the top. That's all done. So that was plot 52. This is plot 59 now. So we'll um, have a look around here. So the rhubarb similarly is all coming to an end. Got a lovely artichoke flower there. Isn't that lovely? Oh, lovely, lovely blue on it. The nigel has all gone to seed. And we've got some pears on our pear tree. I think it's only a couple of years old this pear tree, so I think we've got four. Is that bad? This bed we only replanted about three or four weeks ago. Got some lettuces coming through, spinach, and some carrots at the end there as well. Bits of parsley and bits of other stuff that we put in beetroot. That's a bit of a mixture that one. We've got a small bed of carrots here, which are doing okay. The late sowing of beans are doing okay. They're sort of uh, thriving and doing well. We've taken out all the onions and shallots as well, so we've got some space left now for some other things to go in. Got a little bit of uh, spinach and char chard left here. They're going to seed, which I might let them. I might let these go to seed and let them drop their seeds, and uh, we get a nice uh, plants growing all over the place for nothing really, which is quite good. So the greenhouse we started taking some tomatoes out of here um, little chili peppers are coming on quite nicely the little tiny ones which are very hot variety and we've got some cow at the end they're in pot still so what we do is we put those into the area where the uh, onions and shallots have come out now so we can replant those into those areas and we've got some other stuff at home to bring down and plant as well so this this bed's got the winter brassicas in it's got some cabbages and sprouting broccoli so they won't be ready till next year. We've got a small amount of leeks here. So this is the bed we've taken out the uh, onions and shallots from. We've still got some beet root in here. Look at that one. Got a lovely size of that one. So we'll start cropping these now. So we do plant these successionally, so we've got a sort of steady flow. These are our celeries and a row of parsnips. And we've got another whole bed of uh, cow under cover there as well. They're looking okay. This plum tree's done really well this year. Got some lovely sized plums on it. Not, unlike the one at home where they've stayed sort of miniature size and not grown at all. So yeah, this one's doing all right. We need to sort of crop these and process these this week. Let's... Grapes are starting to swell up now. And the apples are looking good. They're still a bit firm, so I reckon a few more, hopefully another month or so, we start cropping these. Yeah. As you can see, loads and loads of apples on it this year. This is the other plum tree. These ones are a smaller size. We've got another little sort of bed of uh, parsnips in here, which we grew in toilet rolls. And another main crop potato. These ones look healthier than the ones down the other end. So this is our cucumber bed. But this is a good warning for everyone. If you don't label things properly, you end up with a butternut squash plant in here as well. There's one there, one there. Uh, we've got a little, few little things at the end there. We've got some beetroot coming through carrots and rocket. So 
we've got two beds of tomatoes and peppers and aubergines. We're starting to sort of uh, crop some of these ones. Sweet corn's doing well. Getting nice clumping out now. Looks like we've got a good crop of sweet corn. A little bit of parsley left there, not much now though, it's sort of gone really. So these are our red cabbages. They're starting to form heads now. Not massive heads, but they're forming little heads. And I think we've got sort of uh, Brussels under here as well. They're looking quite healthy. Yeah, so we've had a look round the plots 52 and 59. So we're now in the garden. Um, first thing I'll show you is the plums. They're very tiny on this. I think this is a different variety to the one down the allotment. But I mean, they're starting to soften up, but they're I'm not sure they, we're going to get much off them this year. Oh, rabbi starting to fatten up, which is quite good. Should be able to uh, crop them soon. Doing well. This is a late variety apple. They're starting to sort of look quite good, nice size. So these are not normally ready to sort of October period when we pick them all. But these ones are a nice eating variety. But yeah, we've lost lots off the tree this year. Continue picking them up. Yeah, tomatoes have been doing well in the greenhouse here and on the allotment and uh, the ones outside. So we've, I think we've picked around five to six kilograms already. Um, they are start, starting to sort of uh, show some signs of sort of stop, stop producing now. So I'll probably be right another three or four weeks, I think. Those are starting to ripen up, ripen up now. Just changing color, looking good. We need to tidy up the vine again, sort of coming outwards. I mean, grapes are starting to sort of, uh, they're not as big as the ones down the allotment, these ones. Different variety. But we do make them into sort of a uh, juice. But we can still probably get another crop of uh, vine leaves yet. Still not too late. The ones on the ends are still okay to use as um, stuffed vine leaves, which we've done a video on before. If you'd like to look that one up. Um, yeah, we'll still get a few off it, I think, for another crop. But we harvest all our shallots and onions and we're curing them here in the garden so we let the skins dry up thoroughly and let the green parts die off and then they'll be ready for storage same with the shallots we let them dry off thoroughly before we put them into storage or use them to make some pickled onions maybe not quite sure yet i think we need to cut some of the um oregano down and dry some of that So this is our next accession of spring onions, which is start, just starting to germinate. You can see them coming through. And this is our salad mix. Starting to sort of uh, another week or so. We might be ready to stage where we can start using some of it, I think. Um, hope you've enjoyed week one of August video. Give us a thumbs up if you have. And if you'd like to follow our journey into week two, please um, use the subscribe button at the bottom and follow our journey into the following week. Thank you very much.